Hi, it's Bridget. <laughs> Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. And I literally just did that for about five or 10 minutes and I realized I wasn't actually recording this video. Whew. I'm just gonna trust that there's a reason for that. Maybe I don't know about it. Maybe it's because it's that Mercury retrograde kind of psychic thing going on, I'm not sure. But our guest today is Don Knotts, so I'm not going to um, delay, and I'm just gonna bring him right in since he's sitting right across from me. I'm gonna describe to you a bit though how he looks because I did that already. And um, the reason why I am connecting with Don Knotts is because I thought it would be fun. I thought it would be entertaining. I personally have been really enjoying going back, you know, feeling kind of reminiscing and watching old television shows like Three's Company. Now, for some of you, it might be the Andy Griffith show that you would know Don Knotts from, but Three's Company is one that I've been watching. I've also been watching The Love Boat and Happy Days and Family Ties. So before we go any further, it's not really a psychic thing but it's a Bridget thing. Go ahead and put in the comments below, what are your favorite feel-good go-to old TV shows? Like that if you could watch one that you remember from your history, from growing up or hanging out at your grandparents or whatever it might be, go ahead and put that TV show or those few TV shows, you know what I'm talking about, right? They come right to the top of mind. Put them in the comments below so that we can, we can uh, share and chat and see what, um, see what we have in common. Okay, go ahead and put your, those TV shows, those old timey TV shows that you remember from, from, from your younger days, perhaps, okay? All right, so Three's Company. I have had the theme song in my head. I've been walking around today kind of going, come and knock on our door. Take a step that is new. Okay. I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. And I don't want to annoy you with my horrific singing voice. But I want to share with you how much fun it is when you connect with spirit in these creative, entertaining, and really simple ways. Like I was watching Three's Company. I've been watching it for a couple weeks now. And boom, I said, hey, I should channel Don Knotts to my husband. And, and he said, yeah, he'd be, yeah, he'd be good. He'd be a good channel. And I said, but I don't really know that much about, about Don Knotts. And he kind of smiles. So Mr. Furley is kind of smiling at me right now. Um, and I, I said, oh, I feel like, and I listed a couple different things. And I said, but don't tell me, don't tell me to my husband. This was like maybe a couple, like five days ago. Don't tell me though, don't tell me. I'm like, oh, I feel like he died like this and I don't understand what this means and this means. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I said, but don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. I don't wanna know anything. Cause when I come into a channel, I don't want to Google. It's so funny too. I get a lot of comments like, well, you can find this out on the internet. I'm like, okay, then go ahead, <laughs> go Google it. Isn't this much more fun to do it this way? <laughs> I mean, to have a real conversation to interact and kind of discover as we go, right? I just don't know that much about Don Knotts, but I know I love his work as Mr. Furley in Three's Company. And then my husband's like, oh, well, for somebody that doesn't know how he died, you were pretty right on. And I'm like, okay, okay. So it's I have enough info then I can channel Don Knotts. So here we are. So um, uh, Don, May, okay, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Said pleasantries aside, yes, you can call me Don, absolutely. All my friends do. He has this, um, <laughs> what you would expect maybe if you're thinking about the character, Mr. Furley and Three's Company. He says, I did this for you. Do you like it? I did this for you. He says, <laughs> he's got like a kind of a khaki colored, um, very kind of bland khaki colored leisure type suit on with a, uh, like a scarf, like a little tie, a silk kind of tie around a neck, off to the side, kind of long and skinny. And it has this kind of khaki colored 
darker browns, really muted tones, little orange, kind of pumpkin orange colors in it, like paisley, almost pattern. And then there's a, like a shirt underneath that kind of has like this orange tangerine pumpkin with a little bit of the paisley's browns in it as well. And so that's what he's wearing. Okay, so typical Mr. Furley. And uh, I, so I appreciate that. I want to share that. You guys know I'm clairvoyant. I see. So that's why I described to you what they're wearing. So if you were to channel Don Knotts or if he were to come in or pop into you or anybody else for that matter, you don't want no one necessarily see them the way I see them. Because when you channel for yourself and you connect for yourself, you see them in a way that is most appropriate to you because you are the receiver. You are receiving, so they show up in a way that you will get and understand them. So in the channeling here today, as we're having this conversation with Don Knotts, use your senses, use your heart space, use your empathy, and feel the vibes. I have a lot of energy in my heart. Like I can barely, I need to like simmer down my heart chakra. Mr. Furley, okay, so the energy of Mr. Furley is so funny, like, some of the facial expressions just, I mean, crack me up. It's like, classic Mr. Furley, you like it? Do you like that? Very, it's like, very, very good. Oh, who's your drama coach? <laughs> He's like, who's your drama coach? <laughs> I don't have a drama coach. This is all, all ha homemade <laughs> drama. <laughs> It's called, you know, having a lot of energy and a lot of caffeine. Actually, it's the afternoon and I actually did pour another cup of coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You feel like you have a lot of energy, Don. There's a lot of activity up in the high chest. What's that from? He says, call, probably high octane coffee. He says, probably high octane coffee. We might have a lot more in common than you think we do, Bridget. Um, so do, would you say that you had anxiety? Because I, that's how I feel right now connecting into, I literally feel anxiety. You know, in my time, we didn't really talk much about that. Mental health wasn't a, a, a big thing. You, you would hear in, um, you know, in, in the acting circles, you'd hear of someone, you know, overdosing or someone um, doing too much drugs or drinking too much and, you know, and, and um, God forbid, driving. And you'd hear about those stories, but you just... You just figured it was, um, it just seemed like part of the, the environment. I mean, to be, to be very um, straight with you, it just seemed like the environment. So did you get wrapped up in any of that? Oh, you know, I've... <sighs> He's kind of showing me like this, a little bit of like, okay, so I literally see a flash image of Mickey Rooney, like as a child actor. And he's, he's kind of saying, I happened into this in a different way. It feels like stand-up comedy, something like that. I happened into this career in a little bit different way. And he says, I was always kind of awkward and didn't never really fit in all that well. And people just didn't really understand like my jokes, my humor. And, and it seemed almost like that all the misfits went out to Hollywood or all the misfits, um, it seemed like you could find, you could find your way with other people who were, it, it's such a strange, you know, dynamic though, other people who are isolated, but together, that makes, does that make sense? Like he's making me feel like a bunch of misfits gathered together like at a comedy club and some of them, um, everybody's like feeling very alone, but yet they're in groups of people and they're, they're practicing their lines and they're really funny. So I don't know if this is an audition that he's showing me, but it really feels like comedy, like I'm stand up comedian or I'm, um, like slapstick and that kind of thing. Like it's different, it's different. Um, he says, you know, with Mr. Furley, with that character, um, I read for it and he's making me feel like there's an availability issue. So either it's availability issue for him or it's an availability issue for the show itself. He says, they were going through a lot of changes at the time. And, and I don't think they really knew what they were doing or what they really wanted. They changed things like the writing and stuff. Everything kind of started to change. And I had an opportunity to come back and actually do the show. And I read initially early on when there were the other characters and the Ropers were, were what they landed on. But I... 
I had um, a few other things that I was doing at the time and, and it just didn't work out. It just, it just wasn't, um, wasn't um, just kind of making me feel like it wasn't in the plan at that time. Yeah, it's definitely a timing issue, you guys. And I don't really know, like I said, intellectually, I don't Google stuff, so I don't know this. After the fact, then we can look it up and find out how accurate this is or what this interpretation is, okay? What the interpretation is. Um, so I love Mr. Furley, hilarious, very funny. And you also acted with John Ritter. John Ritter has a play, um, has a video too. He's on the playlist, you guys, and videos here at Above Life Channel because I have talked, we have spoken with, with John Ritter. Oh, very talented. You talk about being a multifaceted or, or um, like a chameleon. Oh, very, very good. He was such a comedian, just an incredible, incredible talent he's really talented and you know what and you know what he was a nice guy too he really was a nice guy he really was a nice nice guy and he's kind of saying kid like a nice kid he was a nice kid well did you know his dad Tex? he's making me um feel like he relates more to his dad than he does to john like age wise maybe he might be closer to his dad's age versus versus what John was, somewhere in between their ages, maybe. That's kind of what the vibe I get. So you were also on the Andy Griffith show. So you were in television. Was that like planned or is that something you wanted or actively pursued? You know, I, I read for many things. I. Uh, it's making me feel like tried out, but he's making me like Screen Actors Guild and reading scripts and things. And he says, um, he's making me feel like it's so much easier to just do things off the cuff. When you could improvise, when I could improv, it was so much easier when you had some leeway. You know, if you had to be very serious and it was a very serious type of um, method acting, it just didn't really fit me. It didn't really suit me. I didn't have a, a strong desire to be taken like as a serious actor. I just knew who I was and the kind of entertaining I could do what I could offer. And, and I really liked what I did. You know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed entertaining people. Um, and when you have a good cast or crew with you, it's, it could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun. People can really, just make all the difference in the world. You really feel like you're like, um, I don't wanna say kind or social, but like you're somebody that people would like, like that your personality is something that people would like. Oh, he says, oh, thank you, thank you. I hope that I would hope that that would be true. That would be nice if that was true. And I literally see, oh, this is so sweet. Oh, I almost feel like emotional about it, but I feel, I see John Ritter kind of popping over his shoulder saying that's very true. <laughs> That's very true. Don is a really class act. He's a really good guy. Okay. And so then Don is saying, but I'm not without mistakes. I am not without flaws. And he's making me feel like his personal life. So I feel like he's been married more than once and there may have been issues with that. And I almost feel like there could be either maybe drinking involved or some kind of um, behavior that's not the best. I don't know if it was you know, something else with the relationship that wasn't um, faithful or loyal or that kind of a thing. But it feels like the, he screwed up is what it feels like. Didn't work out. He said didn't work out. He has kids too. I see a daughter. Maybe a daughter and a son. Because then he says and a son, and a son. Unless he's saying and a grandson. Grandson. I feel like somebody's named after him. I also feel like he has a different name. There's more than Don Knotts for his name. I don't know if he changed his name, but there's another name in the middle. And I also see a David. There's a somebody that's named David that's either related to him, connected to him, could be a grandson, could be a brother, could be a son-in-law, could be a son, um, David. And, oh, this is kind of random. This is random. I don't know if this fits or not, you guys. So I do have a little post-it note here of other people and Don Knotts is the first one on here. So this might be related to my next people that I, that I have on my list to channel, but I literally see like what looks like a Jewish star of David. 
So I don't know if John Knotts was Jewish or if he had Jewish connections or he was from Germany or from Poland or something about that and like the whole World War II vibe and stuff. I feel that. Um, and some kind of connection. So like I say, I don't know if it's because I'm going to channel um, somebody from that time period next or if it's because Don Knotts actually is Jewish. I'm not sure. Okay, so... Oh, he's showing me a dog, too, a very blonde dog that's fluffy, kind of looks like a Cocker Spaniel-like, but it's a little bit taller, so it might be a different type of a dog breed. I see a dog that's blonde. Um, I also see, like, Hollywood, what I know of, like, um, the neighborhoods in, like, the Hollywood Hills and that kind of thing. I see him walking along. Um, there's, like, this... Um, hmm, describing to me like walking my dog I'm walking along this like a hedge but the hedge is maybe up to my chest or just a little bit below my chest maybe waist between waist and chest height and it's all across and then there's this big white house there and then there's like these big um kind of pillars or blocks and then there's like a fence but the fence you can't really see all that well the fence is like either like it's kind of like this black color or uh Maybe like an antique bronze or something. It doesn't matter. But it kind of blends in with the wood. And then there's all these um, shrubs and gardens and things in front of that. And then there's this big white house that I see. And I'm walking by this house. I don't know what the significance of the house is. Um, it's like he's showing me the neighborhood um, and the neighbors. And like when I moved in, everything went downhill. You know, you know the neighborhood's going downhill and you know, Don Knotts moves into the neighborhood. And he's making me feel like I moved. I lived in two or three different places in that area in California. I don't know if it's Hollywood Hills. I keep feeling Hollywood Hills, Hollywood Hills, Hollywood Hills. But I know that there's many other neighborhoods around that area as well. So I can't intellectually think about it, like to see the map, but it kind of looks like it goes up kind of by where the Hollywood Bowl is and kind of looks around like this. And then you go back down the other side and down the other side, there's like a lower place before you go down all the way. And he's kind of in the lower place at one point. He always wanted to be at the top, but he could never quite get to the top. You know, he had to live down here a little bit lower kind of a thing. And then um, um, he's showing me like Elvis maybe lived near in that area. He's showing me, um, other Hollywood actresses that have like big hair, like the 70s, <laughs> late 70s, early 80s, kind of big hair, like a, oh gosh, it looks like a Donna Mills. That's the vibe I'm getting right now, like a Donna Mills. I don't know if they were neighbors or what. You guys, if you know that, put it in the comments below. Um, are you buried in Hollywood? Nearby? Nearby, nearby, near about, thereabouts, nearby. So somewhere, yeah, he's definitely around in LA, buried around this area, but it's not big and fancy. He said, it's not, it's not big and fancy. It's not big and fancy, he says. You know, he says, you know, and he's making me feel like he played like a German officer in like a funny or um, some kind of a, a movie or something. And it was kind of funny. He's saying how, how it worked out. And it wasn't like he was like a main character or anything like that. He was like a secondary or like a kind of faded in the background and not anybody would really maybe notice that he was there. Um, like he was not, he's like saying to me, like, I'm a nobody, I'm a nobody at that time. So he's like, maybe that's what, like, I'm thinking, oh, maybe that's why I'm connecting. Because I literally see like a World War II movie and he's like a German officer type or something like that, you know, I kind of see that. But he's not famous then, like people don't really know who he is. That kind of thing. Almost like an extra, but not. He's more predominant than that. Like you'd be able to see who he was, but not like a major lead character in the movie. Not really interested, you guys, in being a serious actor from what I feel. Mm -mm. Mm. You should read the book, he said. I think he has a book. I think he has a book. And it might be an autobiography or a biography. He's like, you should read my book. You should read my book. So there's a book. He's got a book. Or he's either that or he's featured in a, somebody else's prominent book and something about comedians or that kind of thing. And that's, he's like the greatest, the greatest gift to me is in knowing that I made people laugh. I gave people an opportunity to just feel good for a little while, you know? That's, 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 that's how I feel. That's what makes me feel good. It's like, that's what makes me feel good. So I know how you died, I'm gonna say that. Um, I know that it was natural causes of death. There was like, I said, there was like a lung situation where I couldn't tell, I, cause right away I saw cancer 
but then I couldn't see it in the body where it was. And then I felt like, well, there's a lung situation, like pneumonia. And oftentimes, you guys, when you see cause of death with someone, at least when I see it, third eye with my mind's eye, I don't see everything exactly. Like it doesn't play play by play every little detail. I get the general image of it. And so a lot of times I can see it's very common to see like a pneumonia situation because when people are end of life, a lot of times the lungs will fill up with fluid. So it's natural. Like, I, of course I would see that, right? But this is related. So it's like a lung cancer kind of a scenario, right? Because I felt like, oh, I can't breathe. Like there's too much pressure, but it's on the top of my chest, not the low bottom of my chest. But yet I'm, I have cancer. There's cancer and it looks like an art kind of a thing. So he had like some kind of a lung cancer and died of some kind of pneumonia or bronchial thing. So I, I know that. I can see that. Yes. He said yes. And I feel like... It might actually be at like Cedar Sinai. Is that right? That name sounds familiar. Like he may have died there at that hospital. So, okay. Or was being treated at that hospital. He's like lots of x-rays. Lots of like, I feel like I'm in tubes a lot. Like I'm getting sc scans on my body, especially my upper body and, and my head to make sure things aren't, you know, crazy in my head. He's like, and the, you know, you'd be surprised. They did find many brain cells up there, you know. And then he showed me like the comedy clubs or something, a comedy club, something about a comedy club that somebody, there's something where there's a plaque or there's some kind of memorial or honor, honorarium of him at some kind of a comedy club that feels like it's in the LA area or the Hollywood area. Mm -hmm. And then he's showing me, oh, this is weird. I do not know how this fits, but I will try. I'm gonna. I'm doing my best now in Above Life Channel when I'm channeling to share with you exactly what it comes through, um, even if it doesn't make sense to me or I can't make sense of it quickly and plug it in. I see the guy from Hogan's Heroes, the guy that like was murdered or something. I I can see him. I see his image. I see his face. I don't know if Don Knotts was gonna be on Hogan's Heroes if he guest guest starred there. Or if those two guys, I'm going to say his name's Mike or something. If those two guys were, no, Bob, it's Bob. His name's Bob. He's like, his name's Bob. I'm like, okay. I saw I heard it just very loud. Bob, Bob. <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I know that you don't do um, murders, Bridget. I'm like, oh my God, he's being really polite. And I can literally see him. So now I see this Bob guy standing up tall, looks like a Hogan's hero guy with the bomber jacket. And he's standing up tall. He's like, I know you don't do murders. I know you don't like that stuff. I know you don't like any funny business here. Um, but Don was a good guy. He was a good guy. He was a stand-up guy. And Don just kind of looks back at him and is like, I didn't invite him. <laughs> like, he's like, he's crashing the party. He's crashing the party. So I don't know if there's a Hogan's Heroes connection, you guys, where Don Knotts made a guest appearance on Hogan's Heroes, or if he was actually supposed to be in that television show and he wasn't cast or he had to say no because he was doing something else at the time. I don't know if it was Andy Griffith's show or what, but there's some connection there, you guys. And if you know what it is, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Go ahead and feel free to do that or Google after you watch this video and fill in the blanks for yourself as well. All right, so that's it here. Thank you so much for being here on Above Life channel on YouTube. Thank you to Don Knotts, Mr. Furley. Love your work. Thank you so much for being here, for being part of this experience. Thanks to the cameo of Mr. John Ritter, Jack Tripper. That's how I know him in Three's Company, for being here as well, just for popping in. And for Bob, and I want to say Gil or something, Bob Gilbert, Bob, Bob, who just made a little kind of quick appearance as well from Hogan's Heroes. Okay, so that's that. Make sure you subscribe to Above Life Channel so you never miss one of my weekly channeling videos. We're trying to get back into that weekly routine. And if you miss, if I'm not here a week, don't worry, I'm okay, everything's fine. Just take an opportunity to go through the hundreds of videos on the playlist so you can check out that video from when we channeled John Ritter next. Thanks so much for being here. I hope we've inspired your spirit. Filled you with hope. The purpose here is to encourage you to live your life. It's your life after all. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.